Hey guys, Kristen here. I'm going to be discussing the figure of the femme fatale in art and literature. Since the time man has been able to create art, artists have been inspired by the figure of the femme fatale. She has always been characterized as being extremely beautiful, yet mysterious, with an irresistible charm that disarms men and often leads them into danger. Ancient Western mythological examples include Lilith, the Sirens, the Sphinx, and Aphrodite. The figure of the femme fatale held a particular fascination among pre-Raphaelite artists. In her book, The Pre-Raphaelite Sisterhood, Jan Marsh noted that the artists, quote, gazed, fascinated, but repelled, at women of a curious frigidity, cold but sensual, erotic but invulnerable. Their attitudes are piped with a fear of female malevolence, end quote. Indeed, the works of Dante Gabriel Rossetti echo this mindset. His painting, Lady Lilith, first painted between 1866 and 1868, portrays Lilith, a figure associated with male seduction and child murder. According to Judaic myth, she was Adam's first wife and appears as a, quote, powerful and evil temptress, end quote, in the painting. With her porcelain skin, coral lips, and attention to her long, lustrous hair, she embodies the very characteristics of Lucy Audley in Lady Audley's Secret. Victorian realism sought to explore the connection between exterior appearances and internal qualities, more specifically, the self. They believed very strongly that the nature of a person could be physically reflected in their features. Lady Audley's portrait is described to the readers as such. No one but a pre-Raphaelite would have so exaggerated every attribute of that delicate face as to give a lurid lightness to the blonde complexion and a strange, sinister light to the deep blue eyes. No one but a pre-Raphaelite could have given that to the pretty, pouting mouth, the hard and almost wicked look it had in the portrait. The passage concludes with Alicia's input that at some point, Lady Audley's persona could change to match that of the painting. Obsession over the femme fatale still lives within our culture today. Google Images immediately pulls up photos of women who fit the description. Most of the black and white images depict a sultry looking woman, usually cast in deep, contrasting shadows. This is no coincidence. The femme fatale stole the spotlight during the film noir era of American cinema. Contrasted with their simple-minded and two-dimensional counterparts, the women of noir were sinister, smart, and sexual. She, quote, represents the most direct attack on traditional womanhood in the nuclear family, end quote. She refuses to be confined by marriage and lets nothing stand in her way of her independence, often resorting to murder to free herself. The first and perhaps greatest noir icon is Barbara Stanwyck's Phyllis Dietrichson in Double Indemnity, Billy Wilder's 1944 film. The plot includes Stanwyck's character plotting to murder her husband in order to collect his life insurance. Critics have applauded the femme fatale, claiming that these are the women less objectified by film. They are the ones who serve to move the plot in their own devices. Double Indemnity was nominated for 17 Oscars at the 17th Academy Awards, with Barbara Stanwyck nominated for Best Actress. Will you be here too? I guess so, I usually am. Same chair, same perfume, same anklet. I wonder if I know what you mean. I wonder if you wonder. 